Hello, I'm Nicole and this is my sewing vlog. For my next sewing project, I've decided to try and make myself a denim skirt. I just really like wearing them in the summer and I think they're super easy to wear with t-shirts, jumpers, blouses, whatever. Plus, I've had an idea for a pattern hack that I've really wanted to try for a while now and so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. My plan is to use the Megan Nielsen Dawn Jeans pattern. This jeans pattern has loads of great classic features like um, the high rise, the button fly, the coin pocket and things which I absolutely love. So the plan is to use this and sort of take all those things and make a skirt. Doing this is also a really good chance to practice my jeans making skills without having to worry about the trouser fit. It is worth noting that this pattern currently only goes up to a 48 inch hip and I don't know if Megan Nielsen Patterns has any plans to extend it into their curve range or not. Um, I do think if you were to use another um, jeans sewing pattern, like if you already have the Closet Core Ginger jeans or the Muna and Broad, how do you say it? Noise? Noise jeans? I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, um, then I'm sure the process of changing those patterns into a skirt would be pretty similar. I'm going to do a bit of figuring out as I go along with this project and just hope it works. <laughs> The first thing that I need to do is to trace out all my pattern pieces. To hack this pattern into a skirt, I cut out two back pieces and lined them up down the centre back seam. Then I drew a line straight down the middle to create my new back seam and straight along the bottom to create the bottom hem. I was worried about it being a bit short so then I used this curved ruler to add a little bit of extra length at the back. Then I went ahead and cut out my new pattern piece ready to transfer to the fabric. I also decided I wanted to amend the pockets. This is what the pockets of the Dawn jeans usually look like and this is the pattern piece folded out. I wanted the pockets to extend all the way into the fly. Um, I think it's called pocket stays. So I basically just drafted a wider pattern piece. It does mean that my skirt pockets are going to be massive. Then I went ahead and cut out all my other pattern pieces. the pattern pieces cut out now. Today I'm going to try and cut out all my bits of fabric. I'm going to make my skirt in this sort of cream coloured denim. It's a 10 ounce denim so like a medium to heavy weight. And then for the pockets I'm going to use this lovely cotton gingham in like a beige colour from Hey So Sister. Okay so I know I'm late to the party but my brother and sister got me this rotary cutter for my birthday. This is my first time using it because I basically didn't sew anything for the whole of December and January. Oh my gosh, what a game changer. This makes cutting things out just so much easier. Okay, so I definitely need some practice. I'm actually like trimming bits of my pattern off. I still think it's so cool. <laughs> Because I'm doing the pockets a bit differently, I have to finish the front pockets first before I do the fly. My massive pockets. So the very first bit of sewing I had to do was top stitching on the coin pocket and yeah, look what happened. 
I've just remembered how much I hate top stitching thread. It is just really terrible. I'm gonna unpick that and try again, but obviously I've got a lot of tension adjustment to do. run out of top stitch thread. I'm going to call it a day and order some more but progress has been made. More top stitch thread arrived and I went back to finishing my pockets. I decided to French seam the bottom of them which is why I started by pinning them right sides together. Next is the fly. I've not sewn a zip fly before. I'm going to try and find some online instructions to help me. I would try and explain what I did, but I still don't fully understand it myself. So here's a fast forward version and yeah, let's just pretend that I managed to do it as quick as this. Friday. It's the weekend. Um, I've finished work for the day and my skirt is now dry, which is great. Um, so I think this afternoon I just want to figure out this front section and get that finished. I've had a little think about what to do but it is confusing me so I think I might just start it and then puzzle out the top stitching and stuff from there um, and see if I can make it work. Also now that this is dry I can see how my first zip fly turned out and let's see, it works! I'm so proud of that! So the first thing I'm going to do is change the front to be more angled. Um, I've made this little pattern piece here and I'm just going to use that to figure out where to cut in here, what would have been the inseam.
So I'm a bit unsure about this front curve. I just don't think I'm going to be able to fold that into like a nice curve. So I'm actually going to take inspiration from the pockets and sew on this extra little bit of material. Sew it down here and then turn it in and trim it and hopefully that'll be like a nice curve. Basically the same way that this is. Hopefully that'll work. I like how that's turned out. I think it's given it this um, like really nice curve here, which I wouldn't have been able to do folded over. So I think this little secret bit of fabric was a good idea. And now I'm just going to iron these two diagonal sides over um, based on the seam allowance. And then I'll need to cut out a little bit of fabric to go in my gap. So it now looks like this and then fold it over. We have this little triangle. So I now need to cut out an extra little bit of fabric um, to fit in here and then I guess I just top stitch it all together. I'm actually struggling with the top stitching and apparently a late Friday evening trip to Ikea is needed so I'm just going to put a pause on that for a moment and come back to it tomorrow. So the trip to Ikea the other day was definitely worth it. Um, we went to pick up an armchair for our living room but I also managed to check out their buyback section. Our local Ikea um, basically takes part in this scheme where they'll buy back used Ikea furniture and then sell it on in store second hand and in that area they always have some like fabric as well so they either have like off cuts or maybe things that have been returned without their packaging and everything's like heavily reduced there so I managed to pick up this I think it's like linen fabric it's cut off sort of straight down the middle so I reckon it was probably um, some curtains that have been altered and then I also picked up this, which I think was a tablecloth. And this is like really good weight. It's 100% cotton and it's got this lovely um, blue stripe threaded for it. So I'm gonna need to think of something for both of those as well. Oh, and um, on the way out, we picked up some of those bake at home cinnamon buns. They're really good. I would definitely recommend them. And yeah, I'm gonna have one as a sewing snack today. Okay, so back to the skirt. Um, I did manage to finish the front the other day. The top stitching was a struggle. I think really just that this area at the bottom of the fly has so many layers of fabric. Um, I did actually get my sewing machine needle stuck in it and then I had to take it off the machine and pull it out with pliers. But after I changed, my machine needle, it was a lot easier and I did get it done and I think it's turned out really cute. 
So today I'm moving on to the back of the skirt. Um, the first thing is the back pockets. I've seen loads of people do really cute top stitching designs on the back pockets of their dawn jeans but to be honest I'm just having so many issues with top stitching for this make that I'm going to save myself the hassle and just put these on plain just as they are. I now have two back pockets. I actually really wasn't looking forward to that step, so I'm really happy to have that out of the way. And I'm now on to page 17 out of 24 um, pages of instructions, so getting there. And the next step is to add on the yokes to the back of the skirt. So next is like the best and the worst bit of making your own clothes. Um, the best because you get to try it on for the first time and the worst if it doesn't fit, but hopefully that won't be the case. Um, I'm going to go ahead and baste it all together down the back middle seam and the side seams and then try it on. I'm really pleased with this for uh, a first try on actually. I think I might make a few small tweaks but then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch the back seam, attach it properly to the side seams and then it should be ready for the waistband next time. Okay we're back to it and I would really love to get this skirt finished today so let's see how we get on. <laughs> I've got the belt loops done so they're ready to go on next. with it a little bit but I've got the outer waistband pinned onto the top of the skirt now so I'm going to go ahead and sew it on.
The waistband is on, so I just need to turn it all inside out. Then more pressing, more top stitching. And after that, I'll just have two more pages of instructions to go, so the end is in sight. It's not finished yet, but the waistband's on and I can't resist having a little try on. I really wanted to finish this skirt today, um, but I think my eyes just need a break from sewing. So I was just doing the belt loops. I've managed to get the tops of them done, so I just need to do the bottom of them. Um, but it did take me ages and I've actually just bent a needle so I think that's a sign to step away. And then after that I'll just need to do the buttonhole, hammer in the button and hammer in the rivets and then I should be done. Nearly there. And it's finished! One button and nine rivets later and it's done! I finally have a finished skirt and I can't wait to try it on. I'm in no way an expert but reflecting back on this project there are a few things I learned so I just thought I'd share them. One, I decided to leave the hem of my skirt raw which was always the plan um, so I just cut my pattern pieces to the length of view D which is shorts. Um, if you were planning to try this hack and you wanted to hem your skirt then you might want to add a bit of extra length when you cut out your pattern. Two. One spool of top stitch thread will not be enough. Two is probably fine, I used three. I did have lots of issues with my top stitching though, which meant lots of unpicking and re-sewing, so obviously that used more thread. Three. Your needle needs to be really sharp to pierce through the denim. Uh, remember to use a jeans needle and I wouldn't hesitate to change the needle mid-project. I actually used up my whole pack of five needles because I bent or broke so many. Four. If you're hacking a jeans pattern into a skirt, I would personally recommend sizing up one size on the hips, uh, just because I think that a skirt doesn't need to be as fitting over the bum as uh, trousers or shorts would be. Five. I always cut my waistband fabric a little bit longer than the pattern piece says to. I just think that if you end up taking out a bit of seam allowance on the back or side seams then your waistband pieces will still fit and you can always trim it back if you don't end up needing the extra length. 6. This is specifically related to the Dawn Jeans pattern but I wish I had taken some of the height out of the back rise. I just think that the yoke is a little too tall and I wish I had trimmed off like one centimetre, maybe two, right along the top. Seven. Making jeans already involves quite a lot of supplies, but there are two tools that I would highly recommend. The first is a fabric marker. Mine cost me about £2.50 and I used it so much on this make. 
My marker is bright blue and I was sceptical of using it on cream fabric but the ink literally disappears with the tiniest drop of water. Eight. The other tool I would recommend is a seam gauge. It doesn't need to be one like this. Um, I saw that Candice from So Bake Make shared this tip on Instagram where you can literally just draw the seam allowance on a bit of cardboard and then use that as a reference when you're trying to press the edges of fabric to find out your seam allowance. This make just has a lot of bits that need pressing before sewing and I found that it really helped. Now, my last tip is something that I didn't actually do but I have heard good things about. If you have a blind hem foot, which I don't, uh, then apparently you can adjust the width settings and then you can use it as a guide to line it up against the edge of your fabric and uh, sew perfectly even and straight top stitching. It sounds amazing and I'm going to put it on my wish list of future sewing purchases. So maybe those tips are useful, maybe not, but I hope you enjoyed following the process. Hopefully we're going to have a wonderfully sunny summer here in the UK and it'll become a bit of a wardrobe staple. Until then, I'm going to find a project that doesn't require 24 pages of instructions and give that a go. Bye!